Hi everyone, my name is Roy Hassan. Uh, this is a ANT 201, Turning Data into Insight at the AWS uh, Spring Online Summit. In this session, uh, I'm really excited to talk to you about some of the key challenges customers face when building modern data platforms on AWS, uh, and how can uh, we help you kind of overcome these uh, challenges and shorten the time it takes to turn data into insight. So we hear from, from a lot of companies all the time that uh, they're looking to extract more value from their data, but struggle to capture, store, and analyze it efficiently. Data is growing exponentially, coming from new sources like operational databases, SaaS applications, and digital partners. Uh, it's also increasingly diverse, such as relational tables, um, application events, infrastructure logs, images, videos, and audio. All of this data must also be securely um, accessed and managed by any number of applications and people to deliver business value. So you can't really predict the future, but you can put in place the infrastructure and the tools required to adjust to change as quickly as possible. Data helps you identify uh, changes and the right data and analytics approach helps you make the right decisions quickly. Our AWS Analytics customers are doing just that, allowing them to navigate what has been challenged, what has been challenging year, uh, and uh, and help in the fight against COVID nineteen. Vayer Medical um, was producing about thirty ventilators a week. A few months into the pandemic, the company was actually producing six hundred per day. That's pretty impressive. The ability to scale was only possible because of their newly modernized analytic solution built on top of Amazon S3 and Amazon Redshift uh, as their data warehouse. Moderna, one of the leading companies supplying the COVID-19 vaccine, runs its drug, uh, drug design studio on AWS, a uh, highly scalable compute and storage infrastructure to quickly design mRNA sequences uh, for protein targets. It then uses Amazon Redshift as a single source of truth for analytics and machine learning to optimize those sequences for production so that the company's automated manufacturing platform can successfully convert them into physical mRNA for testing. We're truly humbled and grateful to be supporting our customers as they navigate 2020 or navigated 2020 and continue to innovate in the years to come. So there are many challenges customers face when trying to turn data into meaningful and actionable insights. Inflexible, costly, and difficult to manage data platforms create silos and slow down the pace of innovation. They make it difficult uh, to quickly onboard new users and applications, requiring you to hire more engineers just to deal with the break fix instead of solving business problems with the data itself. Um, instead, uh, inflexible platforms also erode users' trust in the quality and the viability of this data. Um, this leads to duplication and sprawl with no clear ownership, further eroding trust, and still stifling collaboration and innovation. Basically, everyone is continuously reinventing the wheel. So traditionally, platforms um, targeted analysts uh, using BI tools and writing SQL but for companies to really innovate, they need, a, they need to enable new personas such as data scientists, product managers, and marketers. Current platforms uh, require an army of, of data engineers to process and prepare this data. There's really no self-service model that allows any user to consume the data with their own uh, choice of tools. This greatly limits the, uh, the types of use cases you can enable with your data. So companies modernized their inflexible platforms, they broke down data silos, and they actually went out and they built a data lake on, in the cloud. Uh, all the data is in one place, cataloged and discoverable, enabling new use cases and improving the efficiency at which existing use cases can deliver value. So improving the time to insight. So, you still, you still need the right process, rigor, and tooling to manage the quality of data being ingested into the data lake. Poor quality leads to, uh, to users duplicating data, buying new tools to help them clean and process this data to get it to a form they can actually trust and use. This leads to data sprawl um, and basically a lot of data sets that get abandoned with no real clear ownerships resp uh, owners responsible for maintaining it over time. 
This problem can quickly spiral out of, out of control, resulting in organizations losing visibility and oversight, making it very difficult to comply with security and privacy regulations. We also can't forget about the many types of users that could still benefit from data beyond just the data analysts. Those are data scientists and modelers, operations leaders, uh, engineers, product managers, and many others. Each of them need the ability to consume data relevant to their needs in ways that best serves their use case. Um, some want raw files, others want structured tables. Some may prefer a search API instead so it can be uh, plugged into their application. Um, to deliver on these needs, we really have to expand the data lake design into what we refer to as a lake house architecture. So at the heart of a lake house architecture is the data lake you already built. It's your data store backed by the scalable, durable, and highly performant Amazon S3 service. AWS Lake Formation is a central governance and security service that protects your data. It allows you to discover data sets, enforce fine-grained access controls, uh, audit usage, and share data sets securely with different teams, uh, also lines of business and even partners. Uh, AWS Glue allows you to seamlessly move data around your lake uh, into purpose-built data services. It provides a simple, uh, simple to use kind of visual interface to build data integrations, uh, hundreds of connectors to popular sources, such as relational databases, SaaS providers, uh, and also a visual data preparation interface for exploration and experimentation, all running in a serverless environment. Having purpose-built data services allows different users to take full advantage of the data for their particular use case without compromising on features, performance, and cost savings. You can also use Amazon Athena to, uh, to simply analyze data directly in S3. It's, uh, it's kind of the magnif magnifying glass for your data lake. Um, a lakehouse architecture ensures that you never have to compromise on performance, scale, or cost at each of the layers of this architecture. Amazon S3 is, is the underlying storage. Lake formation for governance, glue for data integration, and purpose-built data services together with partner solutions to efficiently serve every use case. A much different story than kind of the monolith data platform that we're used to. So customers need a highly scalable, available, secure, and flexible data store that can handle extremely large data sets at a reasonable cost. This is the data lake. Um, AWS has been helping customers build a strong foundation for data lakes with services like Amazon S3 for years. And there are now tens of thousands of customers with AWS powered data lakes. Um, as powerful as AWS Data Lake infrastructure has been, uh, it turns out there's still a lot of steps involved in building data lakes for analytics. First, you need to set up your S3 buckets where data will be stored, then create pipelines to move data from a variety of sources into S3. To make it discoverable, the data needs to be crawled and metadata captured in the AWS Glue Data Catalog. Next, you need to clean, prep, validate, and, and, and uh, validate the quality of the data and transform it into ways that your users can actually take advantage of that data quickly without any additional work. The next part is, is critical. This is where you classify your data, annotate it with additional business context, and define fine grained access controls. This is how your data lake gets its structure, how you ensure a strong foundation to build trust with your users um, so they can be self-sufficient and begin to collaborate and innovate. So it's also not enough to make the data uh, easy to find and understand, you need to also make it easy to access with your user's choice of tool. Uh, also, be able to share data across organizational boundaries and teams, typically operating like within their own AWS accounts. That's something that you really need to focus on because otherwise it's hard to share data. So we've learned from tens of thousands of customers running analytics on AWS that most customers um, that want to build a data lake, and many of them want this to just be easier and faster than it is today. So let's start from the middle and kind of work our way out. Um, AWS Lake Formation is a central governance service that makes it simple to store, update, and catalog your data. It simplifies how um, you manage and enforce permissions, as well as provide a way to audit data sets uh, and how uh, to audit the data sets and how users access them. 
Uh, it, it also enables your users to be self-sufficient, quickly discover data sets on their own, sharing across teams and organizations and accessing it from their choice of tool. We should all be familiar with Amazon S3 by now. After all, it's been around, it's been around for 15 years. In addition to being highly durable, scalable, and cost-effective, S3 offers a number of features that were traditionally difficult and costly to implement with legacy data platforms. For example, automatic life, uh, life cycle management that moves colder data to lower cost storage tiers, cross-region replication to enable disaster recovery, archiving using um, Amazon S3 Glacier, so you don't need to throw away uh, any of your data, and more recently, and my personal favorite, strong read after write consistency. No wonder it's the most popular to, uh, choice for data lakes. All right, so let's kind of double click a little bit into what a typical data lake um, structure would look like on S3. You'd want to set up your folder structure to, uh, to represent how data is most commonly grouped. Typically, this is based on uh, dates since users tend to query data over time. For example, a sales manager wants to select all the columns from the sales table where the year is 2020 and the month is November, right? Um, inside each of these folders are data files in standard formats, most commonly Apache Parquet columnar format. Um, it's just better for uh, it's just better optimized for uh, improved query performance. But you can use other formats as well, JSON, CSV, whatever. At reInvent 2020, we announced a new table format called Govern Tables. This new format actually introduces a fully managed transaction log in the form of a manifest. This manifest is responsible uh, to track the state of your data and to manage data changes, schema evolution, and partitions, uh, and, and much more. So one of the challenges customers face with building their data lakes is inserting and updating data in S3. Customers want similar guarantees they know and love with traditional databases and data warehouses, but actually on S3. So govern tables try to solve that problem. So govern tables offer um, asset transactions that work consistently across multiple systems, both writing and reading in a concurrent way. It also offers a simple to, uh, simple to, uh, way to insert, update, and delete individual records in your data lake. Another common challenge customers struggle with is um, data volume. So as the data volume increase, uh, is managing the physical files uh, in order to ensure the best possible query performance. Govern Tables offers both storage optimization in the form of automatic data compaction, right, merging small files into larger ones, as well as improved pushdown optimizations to help engines uh, reduce the amount of data they need to scan to answer user queries. With machine learning driving much of the innovation these days, we're seeing a growing need to reproduce experiments and to validate the data used to train some of these models. Govern tables make it easy to travel back to a previous point in time or even a version of your data. So you can reproduce some of those experiments and, and verify the data you used. So before you can open up the doors and let your users start querying and, and working with data and doing everything they need to do, you need to define some controls. Thankfully, Lake Formation makes it easy. Lake Formation provides you with a single place to view and manage all of your assets in a data lake, define classifications, assign owners, and audit uh, for compliance. It also allows you to define fine-grained access controls that are enforced consistently across the different compute engines your users uh, end up using. So let, let's, let's look at some examples. A data user, such as an analyst or a data scientist, will be able to find available data sets, drill down to understand business context and relevance of the data, um, as well as also identify the owners who they need to go and contact in case they want to get access to that particular data. So giving them context and giving them a point of contact to go work with to get access to the data is, is very powerful. Data owners and, and stewards can be defined in Lake Formation and give explicit permission to manage only those data sets they are responsible for, right? So you can divide your organization and, and, and assign specific owners or data stewards that are only focused on their data sets. 
They can then grant and, and uh, revoke user permissions to all these data sets. So user can be defined in IEM or through a federated identity using SAML-based identity providers. Um, data admins, uh, they can basically see an audit log of all the transactions going through Lake Formation to really understand who, um, you know, who is doing what, you know, what data owners uh, are, are, are set up, who is given permissions to what tables, what consumers are doing with the data. Um, all, all this information is actually also captured in AWS CloudTrail. So you can actually create uh, additional alerting and build external dashboards if you wanted to provide more visibility uh, or take action based on some of these, these, these changes. All right, so fine-grain access controls uh, can be defined uh, at a database, table, column, and currently in preview, role level, to give you full control over what users can and cannot see. To enforce role level security, you can pass filter expressions as rules using particle. It's an open source SQL dialect that um, can be compiled into multiple uh, database targets, which enables powerful pushdown optimizations when enforcing all these complex rule, uh, complex filtering rules on a backend. Sharing is how we collaborate and innovate faster. LakeFormation enables you to share full data sets, tables, uh, and even specific columns within a table to other AWS accounts. This allows you to consume the data from your choice of tool without having to configure complex cross-account permissions. All right, so Lake Formation doesn't only enable central governance, it also allows you to build more flexible uh, data architectures that best suit your business needs and organizational structure. When you're, when you're a small company, you can get started by building inside of a single AWS account. Lake Formation allows you to manage data, secure it, and make it easily discoverable. But as your organization grows and different teams or departments want their own space in, AW, in the AWS cloud, you may expand to a, to a hub and spoke model. This model defines a central producer, uh, res, a central producer responsible for, in, uh, for ingestion, processing, and sharing data to the consumer accounts. For larger organizations that require more autonomy between departments, lines of business, or even subsidiaries, you can leverage a data mesh architecture um, where each entity is their own producer and consumer. Sharing data sets with each other kind of is needed based on the sharing that I showed you before, or even creating an API interface to share these data sets. Cool. So now the data lake is your source of truth, you can enable lots of use cases by simply accessing data in the lake. But there are many other use cases where data is better accessed through a purpose-built service. For, um, oops, Sorry. <laughs> so for, for, for that need, um, there's a way to, we need a way to seamlessly move data from the lake and into those systems. So Amazon Kinesis uh, offers a family of services that make it easy to move data in real time between systems. Kinesis Data Streams and um, Amazon Managed Streaming for Apache Kafka are two ways to ingest and move events in real time. Kinesis Data Analytics allows you to perform analytics using uh, fully managed Apache Flink or Apache Beam directly on streams to enable real-time actionable insights. Kinesis Data Firehose allows you to output these streams back into your lake or into other systems such as Amazon Redshift or Elasticsearch Service. AWS Glue, uh, it's a fully managed data integration service that allow you, that, sorry, that allow both developers and non-developers to build data integration pipelines to serve their exact needs in a self-service manner. AWS Glue Studio is a visual interface for users to author their integration pipelines, monitor progress, and quickly debug issues. Glue Studio reduces the learning curve and makes it easy for users to extract value from data without needing to depend uh, on data engineers to help them write code. So a common challenge with being able to extract insights from data is joining across multiple data sets to create the aha moment. Traditionally, this requires building ETL pipelines to read from multiple systems, stage uh, this data in a data lake, and then build views based on what the users need. 
this process uh, was hard to scale. Um, it's also very slow to iterate on any kind of changes. So if the user says, hey, give me another table, or give me a couple more columns, it's really hard to iterate on this because you need a lot of help. AWS Glue Elastic Views drastically simplifies this process by enabling you to define a SQL query that will transform a source table into a destination. Elastic View will then continuously materialize that data into the target system for you. So no more writing brittle ETL code or begging data engineers to add just one more table for you. It's just easy and pain, uh, painless, and it's completely self-service. Another great tool is AWS Glue Data Brew. Uh, it's a visual data preparation service that makes it easy for users to profile, clean, and transform the data. It produces um, a transformation template that can be then automated to run, an, uh, to run as new data arrives as well as be audited through some kind of so through some data lineage uh, integration that's available in the tool. So it's a really easy way for any user to come in and quickly stitch data together in a visual interface and then automate that as a pipeline. So now that you know how to set up a data lake, secure it, and move data around, let's look at some of the purpose-built analytic services that will enable your users to extract insights and take action from this data. Cool. So Amazon EMR is the best place to run your favorite big data frameworks to ingest, process, and analyze massive amounts of data in a really in a, in a very cost-effective way. So you can easily run Apache Spark, Presto, Hive workloads uh, on a lar on either a large multi-tenanted cluster, or you can launch a transient cluster, finely tuned for the particular workload that you're trying to run. EMR will automate all the provisioning, configuration, and tuning, um, so you don't need uh, you don't need to be a big data expert to get your job done. No more going into Stack Overflow to to look for for tips and tricks and configurations to to plug in. Everything is completely automated for you. It will also automatically scale up and down the compute resources to to meet the demand of the job, saving you a lot of money. You can you can further save money by using um, Amazon EC2 Spot instances. To at a significant discount. So Amazon EMR also offers a new studio experience that allows users to build and deploy data processing code using notebooks. You can also run existing you can also run those notebooks on existing clusters or just quickly launch a new one uh, and then also debug any issues directly in the same UI. So it's a simple to use interface that you don't have to go to multiple consoles, you're in one place to do all of your job. EMR also gives you uh, multiple options when it comes to launching your Spark jobs. You can launch them on EC2, as you do today. You can choose to launch them on Amazon uh, EKS with Kubernetes. Or if you have data on premise and still want to process them using EMR, you can launch your Spark job uh, on top of AWS Outpost. Very flexible sort of deployment model. All right, switching gears a little bit, so Amazon Redshift. So that's a, uh, basically a powerful cloud-native data warehouse. It's fully integrated with your data lake, enabling you to deliver um, on the lake house architecture we spoke about earlier. Um, you can easily combine data inside of your cluster with data in S3 without compromising speed and functionality. It's also fully automated, so freeing up your DBA to go focus on, on more important things. Maybe they want to learn machine learning. This is an opportunity to do that. So I know AWS is an, innovator, is an innovation machine. <laughs> I see this with all of our services, uh, but the pace, uh, the pace at which Redshift has been innovating just completely blows me away. We continue to listen to our customers and deliver features to solve more problems, improve performance, and reduce cost. Data sharing and machine learning uh, integration are huge. The RA3, NoType, Aqua, and automated performance tuning are just game changers for customers. That is really mind blowing. All right, business intelligence. It's not about building dashboards. Yes, I know, that's what we do with it. That's the physical man, uh, manifestation of what, it, what it, we kind of know about it, but it's not about building dashboard. It's about how we tell stories with the data. Amazon QuickSight is how customers tell stories with data in a lake house architecture. It offers a simple-to-use, paper-use uh, paper billing 
a set of innovative features such as embedding uh, visualization and ML-powered insights. QuickSight Q is really cool. Like this was announced at reInvent uh, 2020 and it was, it, was, it was pretty awesome. So you can actually ask QuickSight questions about your data using natural language and it will give you an answer using visuals. This is using advanced natural language processing models to translate your questions into query parameters that can be executed against the data, which is, uh, which is then visualized in a way that would best answer your question. Great example of how machine learning can be used to accelerate time to insight. So in summary, a lakehouse architecture builds on top of your data lake. It enables simple data management and central governance using AWS Lake Formation, ability to move data between systems using AWS Glue for self-service data integration, or by streaming data, uh, sorry, by streaming real-time events using Kinesis and MSK. You can then take action on this data using many different purpose-built data services, such as EMR, Redshift, and Elasticsearch Service. Finally, you extract insights from this data by combining the power of analytics and ML offered by all of these purpose-built tools using QuickSight. And you build it into stories and visuals your business can use to really drive innovation. And that's how all of that stuff comes together to be able to turn your data into meaningful insights quickly. Cool. So one, actually, one great way to get started with AWS uh, is AWS Data Labs. Um, I've worked with numerous customers who participated in this program and then helped them get from idea to a working solution in their AWS account very, very quickly. Many times when you want to get started, it, it may feel overwhelming. All these services, all these tools, how do I work with them? Engaging with the Data Labs team lets you connect with experts, specialists, um, you know, product team members to understand exactly what problem these services are trying to solve and how you should use them to solve your problem. So don't rack your brain, work with us, and we'll be happy, we'll be happy to, to kind of collaborate with you and build a solution that fits your business needs and help you show value to the business quickly. Also, don't forget to check out our other services, uh, sorry, other sessions uh, on modernizing your data warehouse and move, uh, moving to, to manage your analytics. All right, so um, I hope my session was informative uh, and you were able to, uh, at least I was able to answer some of your questions. Uh, if you wanted to dive deeper and keep learning about AWS analytics services, visit the AWS training portal to get started. Lots of really, really good stuff there. Um, thank you. I appreciate everything. I have my contact information here if you want to reach out to me. Uh, and please remember to fill out the survey so we can actually learn what you like, what you don't like, and what can we do better next time and how to improve. So again, thank you very much. My name is Roy Hassan. I appreciate your time and hopefully uh, this was helpful. Thank you.